What's going on everybody? My name is Frana and welcome back. Today I'm going to quickly show you how to rebuild your Hope Race Evo brake levers. So let's jump right in. So the tools you'll need today are very very simple. It's a small snap ring plier, assortment of picks, a few extra inches, one 8mm um, spanner, a T10 Torx and a 2mm hex. Uh, and a segment of picks. I don't really use the picks. I just use this little screwdriver ground round You'll also need some cotton swabs uh, Some paper towels some isopropyl alcohol dot 5.1 oil uh, some Michael Jackson gloves uh, Red rubber grease. Um, I did check with hope if they recommended dot based grease But they said this stuff is perfect and then obviously your rebuild kits Okay, so we're going to start off by um, just taking this reservoir cap off. Uh, I have tried to drain as much fluid as I can, but I think this thing's still going to be full of oil. Uh, whichever way you dispose of the oil, just make sure you do it in a responsible manner. This stuff is pretty bad, so just get rid of it responsibly. Yeah, that reservoir is still full of old dot oil, so I'm quickly going to dispose of that. Okay, so just leave your um, old seals just one side to make sure you don't accidentally reuse them and put the parts one side as well. Okay, next there's this um, T10 screw on the front of the brake lever. Just going to unscrew that. that one side then you're gonna take off the snap ring from the bottom of the pin that holds the lever in place so it's this one here um, I'm just gonna take it off now uh, I'm gonna replace mine so I'm not really worried about breaking it um, or just bending it to hell like that uh, now you can push this um, brake pin out like that, done with the other stuff. Then take your two more hex and remove the brake lever from the master cylinder. Uh, just turn this screw clockwise. Okay, now your lever is gonna come off and this little brass barrel sits loose in here so i'm just going to push it out to show you make sure you don't lose that put that on your other parts now um in the reservoir there's this little uh seal or cap that holds this plunger in place it unscrews over t10 torx so you're going to unscrew that Once it's unscrewed, you can just lightly pull on the plunger and it'll come out like that. So you're going to have that little plunger, another T10 torque screw, and then one more seal which is now coming out. Uh, from here, the master cylinder sits in the reservoir body and the best way I've found to remove it if it's not like falling out, which it shouldn't, but an easy way to get it out now is just to use a little hand pump. Put it over here where your hose will screw on and just give it a light pump. Just a little bit of pressure usually just pops out the piston. Okay, so just a little bit of pressure mine's come out. And you'll see now we've got the piston and your little return spring. Take the spring off, put that one side. The master cylinder is now completely empty. All the seals and stuff we're going to take out of here is out of there now. Now we're going to remove these two um, seals on the piston. This is the one closest to the spring is your primary seal and the one closest to the plunger thing from the lever is your secondary seal. Oh, okay, that's the 
second time that's happened to me you don't really remove the seals they more break i don't know if these seals might just be brittle because they're old but i generally see the seals just break rather than me removing them since we're going to be replacing these that's not really a problem okay there's a secondary seal okay now take everything yeah, your master cylinder, the plunger, the brass barrel, the cap, your lever, everything. Give it a very good wash, and then when you come back, we'll start reassembling. Okay, um, I've spent some time now cleaning everything up, and now we're ready to reassemble. So take your seal kit and empty it out. You'll get four, four things inside. And we're going to start off with the primary piston seal. Now this is, um, I'm starting off with this one because it's definitely the most difficult to fit out of everything here. Uh, so just take some red rubber grease, grease up the seal nicely, make sure you get it inside and out, just all over. And move that one side. Now getting the seal onto the piston is a bit tricky. So what I'm going to show you what I do is it has a a tiny hole inside and that's obviously going over this this part of the piston um so what i do is i take two picks and i pull the seal open and try to push the piston into the seal and then work it over there from my from there with my fingers um it's important to note that the seal is cupped so just make sure it flares out away from this concave side where that little plunger is going to be pushing on. So if your piston is like this, the seal must face away from it like that. The cup is going to face away. I know that looks messy, but it's the best way I've found to put it on and not to damage the seal in any way i did pull some grease off of it now so i'm gonna lather it up again it's not necessary to go this um hectic with the grease it's just um i'd rather have too much grease than too little uh the secondary piston seal is a lot easier to fit you can just fit it with your fingers um if you don't slip with all the grease um this will obviously depend on what type of glove you're using or what type of grease. Almost had it there. And it's remember it's important to put it on correctly so it faces away from this concave side. So both seals should face the same direction. Okay, so that wasn't too difficult. I'm just gonna lather it up with grease again. You'll see as you try to fit the seals, you you tend to rub away a lot of the grease. So then your spring just pushes on there. Make sure it's just seated um, around the bottom there. The bottom coil of the spring should just press up against the piston. Now, Let's give it a little bit more grease one last time and this is now just going to fall into the lever spring side first let it just fall in and then you can lightly press on it with your um, finger you should feel with your finger there's a nice return on it uh, what we're going to do now is What we're going to do now is take this little plunger. This isn't strictly necessary. It's just something I've been doing and I think it is a good idea. Just lightly grease under the ball side here. Then take your little plate. Um, I don't know what to call this, but the, yeah, let's just call it a little plate. Slide it on so the threaded side of this plunger shows outward. Then take the shortest T10 screw you removed from the brake housing, 
This one isn't colored. It might be the same on your levers. It might not. Um, then put that, just let it sit on top of the piston. And now you're going to take a T10 and just press on this plunger slightly. And you'll see the seal falls in place half. Now you're going to tighten that T10 screw. Uh, just finger tight. Um, there's no like uh, torque specs on this, or at least I couldn't find any. But if you're gonna, if you want torque specs, I'd say, let's say, let's say three and a half newton meters, absolutely maximum. I think two and a half is probably fine anyway. Uh, now with that seated in place and the screw tighten, you can just press on it a little bit with your thumb to make sure it's moving freely and there's no hiccups or anything. This feels perfect. Okay, from here, you're gonna take your little brass barrel, slide it into your brake lever, and then we're gonna take the two more hex and just tighten it onto the onto the little plunger so just push your two more X through onto the plunger and then press the barrel up against it and start screwing anti-clockwise you should start to feel it take pretty soon okay mine's taken there so now just wind it a few turns in let's say let's say five turns Then from there, you're going to take your little lever pin, line up your lever with the uh, holes through the bushes and the hole in the master cylinder, and then drop it in. Just remember, there's a threaded hole here on this pin, and you have to line that up with the lever on the outside. So just be, take careful notes of that. It's not a train smash if you don't. It's easy to re rotate once it's in there. Okay, from here you're gonna take one of the remaining T10 screws you have and you're gonna put it here in front of the lever and then just screw it down. Make sure that's just finger tight. And from here, you can uh, give your brake lever just a feel to feel how it feels. It feels absolutely perfect. So we can go on from here. Now I'm going to replace the um, little snap ring which I broke earlier. I've got a new one here. So I'm just gonna put that on. Okay, that snap ring is on there. Now for the top side, uh, this seal sits submerged in dot fluid. So sealing, it doesn't experience any oil pressure. So I'm just going to lightly grease the lip of it on the outside where it all sits under the reservoir cap. Then you'll see it just sits in there nicely. And now we're gonna do the cap and with your seal seated on there you're gonna put on your cap you'll feel it slots into place nicely and then you can replace the two t10 screws And with that, you're all done. Brake lever is now fully rebuilt. You can now just bleed it up, put it back on your bike and go out trading. Uh, just some caution. Uh, 
if you're not comfortable taking the lever off of the bike and bleeding the brakes and doing stuff like that to the bike then maybe you shouldn't try this but um, I'm an idiot and I did this in just a few minutes so if you are comfortable with delving into the brake parts I encourage you to do this it makes the it makes an old brake feel brand spanking new again and it's highly recommended to I'd say let do this once a year maybe maybe once every two years I think this is the first time I've this brake has been rebuilt since it was bought new in 2014 so yeah hope you enjoy <laughs>